Creating animated content is one of those projects that can range from big explainer videos all the way down to animating just a few simple graphics. So to make everyone After Effects rock stars, here are 10 animation styles that will help you easily produce the best animated videos. Let's get started. All right, these techniques will range from creating big master scenes all the way down to simple styles, like for example, using the CC bended effect to make layers smoothly bend and sway. When this effect is applied to an object, nothing will happen until you move the start point to where you want the motion to begin and move the end point to where you want the motion to be at its peak. Then keyframe the bend property to make your graphic pay you your lunch money. And you can loop the process by using the loop out ping pong expression after all clicking the stopwatch. Now you can go and bend some stuff. But what about creating full scenes like this? How do you get these graphics and how do you animate specific objects like this windmill? Well, you're going to want to enlist the help of vector files, which you can create inside of Adobe Illustrator. But if you're like me and don't want to design, you can easily search for free vector graphics and then open those projects in Adobe Illustrator. Now, similar to how layers work in After Effects, you'll need to place objects that you want to animate into their own layers. We can then easily separate everything and then when you're done, you can save as an Illustrator document. Then in After Effects, you can open that up as a composition and this will allow you to control your individual objects. So with my mill blades, we can use the pan behind tool to center the origin of animation by moving that anchor point. And then we can use the time expression to rotate Millie scissor hands around forever. Another way to get graphics is to use the generative AI option in Illustrator. Just type out the specifics of what you want and this works best for simple objects. So just click subject and you can even select the type of effects and color palette that you need and then click generate. And the cool thing about doing this in Illustrator is that you'll be able to separate the generated layers, which makes animating in After Effects so much easier. And to make your animations a breeze in After Effects, you can animate entire projects effortlessly with our 2500 plus presets. Just select your layers, apply your preset, and watch your project come to life in moments. Be sure to get our free animation presets in the description below. And if you do build out your arsenal of post-production tools, you'll be supporting our channel. So thank you very much. All right. The next visual tip is creating depth, which gives your work that cinematic touch. All you need to do is make your objects 3D and adjust the Z position to have them pop away from the background. And for example, this scene is now actually 3D. And then you can create a camera and add a keyframe for position and then use a dolly towards cursor tool to zoom out or into your scene. And from here, you'll want to expand by duplicating and adding in new objects. Just be sure to adjust their Z position to fill your scene with that depth. And as a bonus, turn on your camera's depth of field option, increase the aperture and the blur level to pop your scene out of focus, then adjust the focus distance to draw attention to your objects and away from your inner Spielberg. But hopefully now we're focused on animation because when you need simple movement, we can animate in real time with the puppet pin tool. Just double click your objects, plop in a few points around the general area on an object that you want to animate, and then pin areas that you don't want to have movement. And when ready, hold control or command on your keyboard and move the main pin around to animate your layer in real time. As you can see, I'm ready for the party. But let's warm up with some fire. An easy way to create fire is to apply the CC Mr. Mercury effect to a solid layer. And it's crazy at first, but we'll make this a little less Nickelodeon-esque. Start by setting the animation to obviously fire, and then you can bring this down by a touch so we can see everything. Then shape the fire by lowering the velocity, birth rate, gravity, and extra. But overall, the goal is just to contain the spread. Be sure to set the light's intensity to zero so that you have that original color. And lastly, set the depth size to zero and the birth size somewhere to around one. And then from here, you can duplicate the layer, change the color of the solid, and then lower the birth size to create a variation. And do this one more time so you have three colorful layers like so. And for those of you that like to overachieve, we can push the effect even further by creating an adjustment layer. And then we'll throw in the glow effect from Stylize. 
We can just increase the threshold and the radius. And if that glow effect is not enough, just go ahead and duplicate it. And then when you're done, you can import this fire asset into your main composition. And now it's time to roast some marshmallows. Though sometimes it does get windy outside. So this is how to simulate wind on your graphics. And this will work for PNGs and Illustrator layers. So create a mask around the area you want affected by wind, but make sure the part of the mask is straight where it connects to your layer. Then duplicate your image and set the mask to subtract. Now apply the wave warp effect from distort and mess around with the height and width until you're a satisfied customer, but you won't be satisfied because of the obvious cut here. To fix this, apply the transform effect and place it on top of wave warp. Then position the straight side of the mask to the edge of your composition. Then set the pinning to that edge. And finally, you can use the regular position value to reconnect this back onto your object. And now you become the master of the wind. If you want to work with scenes that fly through your composition like this, you'll need your graphics to be bigger than say 1920 by 1080 because this allows you to create a null object, parent everything to the null, and then keyframe the position to create extended scenes. Now, if you want your objects to follow a, say, a custom path, you can go ahead and grab the pen tool and draw the motion path that you want your object to follow. And then when you're done, you can copy that mass path and paste it to the position of the layer. And this will give you rove across time keyframes, which you can easily expand the length of. But to make the front of your object actually rotate with the path, you'll need to go to layer, transform, auto orient and click orient along path and boom problem solved okay the last animation we'll create is a ripple effect which is great for streaks for example create a straight line with the pen tool with stroke only enabled and then you can use the taper start or the end length to narrow this line in then just apply the ripple effect from distort feel free to mess with the radius and the wave settings to get the optimal results for your ripple and just like the fire technique, you may duplicate, lower the stroke size, and change the color to get animated streaks. Subscribe to be the best and always be creating.